Do you know what? I should be walking in flip-flops in the sand dunes. Hello everyone, welcome back. Do you know what? I've got more sand in places than I ever thought possible. Welcome to this tour of Gran Canaria. Please make sure you give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So let's start the tour, but not here. We'll come back to this later. Stunning view at sunset, look at that. So this is Play de Inglés and uh, around the corner is Maspalomas. You can see the, uh, the famous Maspalomas sand dunes, which we're going to have a walk on. It's extremely hot, the hottest part of the day. It's probably not the best time to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, we're also going to be walking down uh, that row of restaurants and shops down there. But up here is where you can go into Play de Inglés main shopping centre. Some very pretty little bungalows up here. But you do get a great view up here. I don't know if you can see that. Look, there's a, a lot of people that do skydiving. It must be amazing to see the sand dunes from above like that, though. Here and Puerto Rico, warmest parts of the island, especially in the winter. You know, on a good day in the winter, you can get up to 25. 26 degrees. It's always very windy on this part. And that slide, I've been coming here for about 20 years. It's still there, they've never got rid of it. I think back in the day, you used to pay maybe two euros to slide down it from the top down to the bottom. temperature there saying 26 degrees pretty much average for most of the year it's quite windy down here so I do apologize I haven't got my other mic on me so the time now half past two a lot of people and some food maybe a beer this used to be one of my favourite bars, actually, to get a drink of an evening, all their cocktails that they do. It's got beach views, which is quite nice. If you're on a budget, McDonald's, you can't go wrong. And a Spa Express that does, like, every single flavour ice cream you could possibly imagine. Honestly, people do not look where they're going. Including some of the waiters that just like walk into me. That's happened so much today. As you go further up, it starts to go a little bit more quieter. And where the sand dunes and Maspalomas begin. I'm already sweating, so this is gonna be hot. And hopefully there'll be less wind in the dunes as well. can see they start here so I could walk this way but um, still far too hot so I'm going to walk the other way just look at the view so we've come to the very end of the strip and the restaurants and on to the dunes Here we go. I might skip this bit because this is going to be hell walking 
and in flip-flops as well in this sand that is extremely hot. I'm going to try to attempt to go as far as I can into the middle of it. So the thing about these sand dunes is they're constantly changing. Just look at that with the wind, how it's completely reshaping them constantly. And also some of these dunes can get pretty high. <laughs> oh, sh I'm not gonna lie. The sand is so blistering hot, even walking with flip-flops on, it's painful. So these sand dunes actually cover around about a thousand acres and a lot of people thought that the sand came originally from the Sahara, which is not actually correct. Over thousands, millions of years, it literally came up from pretty much the seabed. That's why I read online anyway. I'm going to move because the sand's blowing in my face right now because I'm in a little ravine and uh, the sand's sweeping down. Probably not the best place to do it, but I was just trying to get out of the wind a little bit. But uh, yeah, let's continue the tour. Just look at where I am right now. And when you get into the middle of these dunes, it's the closest thing you're going to get to being in the Sahara, I guess. And all you see is just sand dune after sand dune. And obviously, I would suggest you bring water, better shoes than flip-flops and also maybe bring a sun hat that's probably a good idea because right now I've got none of those I'm in the middle of the Las Palomas sand dunes and you do have to walk up some pretty big sand dunes let's see what's over the edge I tell you that is not easy walking up these dunes in flip-flops and as we, as we get up here well we've got quite a view but even more sand dunes to discover my blooming flip-flop <laughs> it's just literally I'm trying to get up here it's got buried I have no idea where the other one's gone this is way too hot to walk on without flip-flops. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Just look how fine this sand is. So you can see why. Oh my God, I'm never going to find my flip-flop. No... I didn't give up just digging. And I think, oh my God, I got it. Phew. So just walking up. Now I would say this is the highest sand dune, but it's not. That one over there is. Just look how high I am. I don't want to even attempt to go down there. But as you can see, the sand dunes, they go on for miles. Oh, and I forgot to mention, sometimes you'll see people walking around completely and utterly naked. So, uh, eyes front. In fact, I might as well go naked. Only so anyone that's been coming to Puerto Rico for any amount of time will know that uh, on this particular spot used to be uh, a water park. Now there is this very swanky shopping restaurant mall, which is really nice. What's um, quite odd about it is it's when you look, very posh buildings, and then of course the volcanic rock. And uh, even more weirder is the fact that there's a big dried up water channel, or waterbed, whatever, going all the way through it, which hasn't been used for years, but just in case if they have a flood up above in the mountains, the water needs to be able to come through here down to the sea. And actually it goes all the way along um, Puerto Rico and any of the restaurants and buildings they kind of have to build slightly over it I don't think they build over it but obviously just segregated so but you've got the new and then you've got the old up there 
very nice but uh, very expensive I think there's an Indian there that's an American like burger chain but yeah it's very nice you got an Italian restaurant there and a, uh, a noodle place I've never heard of before but uh, this also looks pretty good at night with the fountains they do a different display every uh, five minutes or so kind of really eerie to see those blokes at the top there nice ceiling I think there's even more shopping down there but we're literally going to be walking down towards the harbour and the beach I'm just showing you the uh, the new part of Puerto Rico can you see the steam that's coming out on the roof water vapour coming down and cooling you off it doesn't stay on all the time you can see it over there it looks like smoke it just comes on for about 15 minutes and then uh, gets switched off again but uh, you've got all the big designer shops here Mango, Timberland, the Spanish shops as well. And I obviously in Spain, I love the shopping centers that are outside in with the, uh, the air coming through, love it. Don't know if you can see that, there's a fan up there. I don't think that's gonna do much being outside, do you? So leaving the new mall behind and heading to the old shopping centers in Puerto Rico. Obviously the shopping centers here are places where you go and have food of an evening, watch live entertainment, as well as do a little bit of shopping. Mostly they're, uh, they're kind of like camera shops and, and little cheap tacky shops. I love these flowers in the Canaries. I remember buying one of these once to put in my garden. It lasted all of a day. So Puerto Rico is in a big valley, basically. So you've got hotels to the left, and to the right as well. But yeah, in Gran Canaria, you'll find shopping centers everywhere. Some are themed like the Irish centers and English centers as they call them. Others are generic. And I'll just show you what the kind of things, what kind of things you get inside them. Obviously you're spoiled for choice for places to go for some food. Um, and on a night out, it's pretty busy up here. But obviously this time of the day, a lot of people are still in bed. It's amazing how quiet it is right now. I was here last night, it was very busy. As I said, places to go, for some food, do a bit of shopping. You know, some people find them tacky. I love them actually. I mean, you can get a, uh, a pint for two euros, a large beer. You can get everything in here, including even though it's September, some Christmas stuff. <laughs> How random. These are different. It's a bottle opener with um, pretend liquid inside. Now, I've been coming here for a number of years and uh, because of the new mall, this has had a little bit of a facelift. And when I say facelift, they've added some new I don't know, fascias on the side and added these little wood trusses to try and make it look a little bit more sexy, I guess. In fact, you can still see them doing bits of fascia work on the, uh, the front of the shopping center. Before I go any further, as you know, I'm a big fan of uh, McDonald's and I wish they would have something like this in the UK. A McDonald's cafe. Check this out. How cool is this look? Something called McPops, never heard of them before. Little donuts, I think. But the, uh, the cappuccinos and frappuccinos look so much better. So we're gonna head this way down towards the, uh, the harbour and the beach. Honestly, you are spoiled for choice for places to go and grab a bite to eat at night and uh, for entertainment. And they do love their miniature golf in the Canaries. You're never than two minutes away from a miniature golf course. 
So if you remember, just up in the shopping centre, the dried up riverbed, you can see how it literally comes all the way through the centre of Puerto Rico, look, and continues down onto the beach. This is such a cool place. This is an Angry Birds activity park for the kids. You know, if you ever wanted to have your own little bit of paradise, I saw one of these for sale. Right, these are tiny little bungalows, probably maybe one to two bedrooms. I saw one of these for sale for 90,000 euros. I don't know which one it was, but I saw it come up on, um, as we walked past an estate agents, just further up near one of the restaurants. I believe it's one of the ones down here. They normally have a for sale sign in the window, but um, yeah, a little bit of a front garden could do with some uh, some painting. But for 90 grand, if I had the money. There's also a beach club here to my left that uh, whenever I've been here, it never seems very busy whatsoever. So, um, I don't know, I th it feels like it's missing something, but I don't know what. So even though this is a port, there is a beach in Puerto Rico. It's not overly big. The sand isn't black. It's a kind of golden color. There's some beds that literally go all the way around the breakwater. We'll just go and have a look up there. So yeah, you remember the, uh, the dried up riverbed. This is kind of where it comes out. So you wouldn't want to be around here if there was uh, a lot of rain further up in the, uh, in the higher routes. It's like the smallest beach ever. You can see all the hotels look hugging the uh, the valley. There's more around there. Feels rather weird to have a sunbed here because it's a long way to go to the toilet or if you want to grab a drink I guess you'd have to bring it with you obviously you get a lot of um, glass bottom boats that go out from here as well people do fishing but further around that corner is uh, one of the nicest beaches on the island called Amadorus let's go and check that out so Puerto Rico is about 15 minutes walk along there and if you walk along this uh, coastal path just next to the humongous rocks you'll come across one of the best beaches on the island. This is Amadorus Beach and um, what's quite unique about the beach is it looks almost like a Caribbean beach, white sand, which actually has been imported. But also the downside of having white sand is that the water will be a lot colder than um, elsewhere on the island, even though it's in a bay. What's really cool about it is they put sunbeds along the rock bar. I'm just gonna have a walk over there. These are weird as well. They are scattered along here and they're actually chimneys from the restaurants that are below because if I just come across here you'll see what I mean it's all these awnings and stuff underneath them the restaurants so all this is built on the roofs and these are all the um, the chimneys for the food so you'll uh, often smell quite a lot of bit of uh, food smells coming from them I thought they were just like a little design thing but they're not It's a pretty big beach. Pedalos, there's a, an inflatable water park over there. If you want to get away from all the crowds of the beach, you can come and uh, get a sunbed here. Very nice. Although, to be honest, I checked out the prices. It's four euros for a sunbed, four euros for a parasol. So that's uh, eight euros. 
and obviously if you want to come with somebody else that's 12 euros just on sun beds and parasols you see a lot of these boats go past with um, excursions on them catamaran there I always remember when I first came on holiday to the Canary Islands I remember the rep saying a day on the water is worth three on the beach which is absolute rubbish <laughs> although I guess the science behind it is the uh, the reflection of the sun against the water but you can obviously get that by being on the beach plenty of places to eat grab a coffee a beer an inflatable and those apartments up there if you've been coming to uh, the canaries for any amount of time in the past 20 years or so timeshare has been a massive thing and uh, they were really pushing these about i would say about 15 years ago they were pushing them like anything it's only right we go and test the water the sand though isn't overly soft it's actually like um bits of shells tiny little shells oh so cold so cold but uh so nice So right now I'm in Morgan, or Morgan, however you want to say it, um, and it's a Friday. Normally on a Friday, this place is absolutely buzzing because of the market, but because of the dreaded C word, there's nothing on. But uh, what we'll do is we'll walk down towards the harbour. It is very pretty in Morgan, um, and a place where I've always wanted to actually get my own holiday home, but um, obviously, <laughs> I could never afford it but yeah normally there's market stalls all the way down here all the way around the harbour as well there is a little bit of a beach here we'll check that out too do you know what I've only ever come here when the market is on so uh, it's actually really weird to be here when the market is not on because it's so quiet So they call this place the Little Venice. You'll see why in just a moment. So it's got a little mini beach. And over here we go towards the harbour. You can see why people call it the Little Venice. Very pretty. Some lovely apartments up here. <laughs> you don't see many mannequins with a face like that, do you? Just looking at the prices, yeah, a bit too pricey for me for lunch. I will, however, show you one of my uh, favourite places to eat here in uh, Morgan in just a moment. In fact, it's uh, it's just over there. You probably can't see it, but these are lovely little houses. Look at that. Can imagine having that as our little holiday apartment if I could afford it. This is why they call it Little Venice. These little waterways. 
through the houses into the harbour here. So pretty. Like I say, I'm actually glad the market isn't on because if the market was on, it would be so busy. The market stores would kind of ruin the view a little bit. Take boat trips here to go and see dolphins, etc. You can even take a submarine look in front of us. Look at those fish. Look at that. How they're just grabbing a little bit of air while they're eating. There's a lot of fish. God, was that me that did that? <laughs> If you ever wanted to stay in Morgan itself, there's actually a hotel here, which is very nice. It's four star. I stayed in here once for a night and it is beautiful, especially at sunset. This is called Hotel Porta de Morgan. Obviously you can't see too much from the reception, but uh, trust me, it's a very nice hotel. So I'm here to visit the largest cactus in the world, apparently. This chicken just decided to just like come running. He keeps, I don't know. He keeps which... chasing us. <laughs> There's this chicken that keeps following us. Do you want to come home with us? Look, and then as soon as you go towards it, it's like, walk around the corner, see if he follows us. Quick, hide. <laughs> oh, I keep thinking of Smidge right now. <laughs> Go, go, go. So, this is cool. Um, nobody's serving in here. There's a table there that's reserved, but for who? That is the question. There's all this uh, very... Wow, these are all full. Gabby, these are all full. No, but, the, but some of these, some of these bottles of wine are like really old and... The, and and they're all full. I don't get it. Does someone normally serve behind it? Well, I just said to this guy, today, mate, where's the bartender? Is he Australian? He looks it. What's it, these whiskey barrels? They're not looking like they're having a very good time. <laughs> no. What's that message he's got in his hand? Like Weird. I have to say, this must be the strangest attraction I've ever, ever <laughs> been in. Bottles and bottles of um, wine and beer. And two scared men playing the guitar. In fact, there's no beer, what am I saying? So these are all empty then, and that's uh, full. Talk about strange cactuses. What does that look like? I have no idea what it is, but that's a very furry a cactus. Cactus. This place just gets weirder and weirder. That looks like it's um, like a volcano, something that would erupt, maybe. I'm not quite sure. And there's a, there's a little tower there with bells on it. Oh, we found the toilets. Just there to the... I can smell the toilets, actually, <laughs> as well. Wow. If you are interested in cactuses or cacti, uh, definitely come here. I think there's every single cactus ever here and also the canary and palm it doesn't really say which way to go so it's like do i go up this way do I... i'll go this way it was supposed to be six euros to get in here but i uh i bartered with him and <laughs> that's the chicken that was following me before <laughs> following me um, yeah, it was supposed to be six euros, and I said, will you do five euros? And he said, no. And then we said, oh, let's go. And then he said, okay, then. These are fruit, aren't they? I believe. I forgot what they're called. But you can actually eat them. So strange. There's the furry kind. The mini spiky kind. And the flipping ridiculous spiky kind as well. They're small, they're bushy, or they're long. What the, what the heck? 
that chicken is following us. That chicken has followed us all the way up here, and we I've really walked far. It keeps following us. I think we've read it wrong, you know, because you know it said the world's biggest cactus. I think it, it meant cactuses. the world's biggest cactus farm, and we've read it wrong. I thought we I never just saw the word farm. No, neither did I. We were confused. We thought you have the world's biggest cactus. Ah, uh, no, it's the biggest park, not the cactus. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's the no. world's biggest cactus park. See. Cool. All right, thanks for letting us know. And if you want the ultimate sundowner experience, head here at sunset, as long as you don't have a fear of height. Absolutely incredible views over the Atlantic. Like I say, if it was clear, you'd be able to see Tenerife, Mount Tidi at the top. Often in the winter, you can see snow on there. I don't know if you can hear that, the waves crashing underneath. But what a stunning view at sunset, look at that. And just one more place on my tour I wanted to give a special mention. You can't beat Holiday World in Maspalomas. So I first remember coming to this place years ago and none of this was here. It was literally just an amusement park, but now there's places to get food. There's bowling over there. And I think you actually, and so you have to pay to get in here. This used to be free to walk around, but now you have to pay to get in. One of my favorite Spanish rides ever is over there where you've just got to stay on the balls for the longest time possible. But I've got here about 10 o'clock and it closes literally at 10. Thank you so much for watching my video of Gran Canaria. If you liked it, please make sure you give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe and click the notification bell and hit all. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can do that through Patreon, channel memberships and PayPal. All the links are in the description. I'll see you next time.